Hello, everybody. I think I'm live. Let me have a look. Yes, looks like I'm live. <laughs> Yay. And the people that you're watching. It's always nice to see you. So thank you for coming. So yeah, today is, um, I haven't done anything on this painting for maybe two or three weeks, I think, something like that. And uh, it's a brief history of this painting. I started it quite a while ago. Kind of went through a period when I decided it, I didn't really like the way it was going and wanted to change some things. Um, <clears throat> which I have now largely done, which all of this section in around here has all become kind of um, softer, just softer. So bits that I haven't worked on since the beginning are this bit here, but I quite like this bit, I think that's all right. This flower here needs to be completely repainted or at least changed, and this needs to be redone. So those are the bits that I kind of want to, to look at the most today. Um, I'm a little bit behind schedule, so I haven't even got my paints out yet. But that means that I can tell you what I'm putting out and why as I do it. Which is nice, right? So this is Rublev Lead White Number 2, which is in Walnut Oil. Um, <clears throat> the only reason I'm using this one and not the number one in linseed oil is because the shop had run out of the linseed oil one I usually get. So what else am I going to need? Always paint with black, as all good painters know. Um, black is there. I always have it on my palette to drop chroma, mostly, um, of anything that's towards the blue end. Um, towards the blue side of the hue with raw umber, which I also use to drop chroma anything that which is most colors that are around the orange and yellow side of the hue wheel low chroma um, oops, sorry my camera control app just died hopefully everything's still running all right <clears throat> Not entirely sure why it's decided to pack up, which is most annoying. Um, which means I can't affect the cameras as I'm streaming. Hopefully that won't be a problem. Um, what else am I going to put out today? Well, I've got some pinks to do, so let's have some quinacridone rose. A blue-red, high chroma, good in mixes. Um, and that's probably going to... I only put a little bit of that out because it's so powerful. That's probably going to be a little bit too far towards blue red, so I need a yellow now. I'm going to put a couple of yellows out. First one is cat yellow, which is an orange yellow, which is going to be useful for sending that quinacridone a little bit further towards an orange red. Just a small amount of that. And I'm also going to put out, if I can find it, cadmium yellow lemon. Which is a green yellow, which is mostly for the background. Only need a little bit of that too. Um, I'm going to put out a little bit of yellow ochre because sometimes I want to drop chroma in oranges further up the value range and that's quite good for that. And I'm also going to put out, what's this? Cadmium red light. No, I'm not going to put that out because I don't use that anymore. In fact, if anybody wants my tube of cadmium red light and can come round to the house, you're welcome to it. I never use it, haven't used it for years because I now use my orange red naphthol, which is higher chroma. So those two reds give me the red side of the 
you will pretty much covered. Um, let's also have some transparent red oxide, which is for the oranges when I get down into the shadows, because what happens with these, with the local color of this rose here, is that it starts off as a slightly blue, a bluish red, more kind of in the light. And then as it goes into the shadow, it goes a little bit more orange. You could say warmer, but I like to be um, annoyingly precise about what happens to colors. What's this? This is green gold. Now this is best thought of as a yellow, a greenish yellow, right down the value scale towards the bottom of the value scale and it's quite good chroma and is good in mixes too. I don't think I'm going to need anything else today. Let me catch up with the next. Who's here? Siku, hello. Thank you. Very good to see you. Thank you. Anne is here as well. Yeah, I don't know how much it's going to change today. We'll see what happens. John says the sound is not very clear on YouTube. <clears throat> Anybody watching on YouTube got a problem with the sound? Might be. Oh, actually, it does look a little bit quiet. Let me have a look. I think one of my mics wasn't turned on. That should be better now, hopefully. I have two mics and I only remembered to turn one of them on. <laughs> Sasha, thank you. Good to see you. And Joel and Fran. David says, do you not have any problems buying lead white? I think Jackson still require you to swear it's only for restoration purposes. Well, if you go to Cass Arts, you can get um, Michael Harding, um, what do you call it? Um, Kremnitz white, which is lead white with a bit less oil in it. Or if you go to supremepaints.co.uk, you can get Rublev lead, lead, lead white there. And they don't require you to jump through any hoops. Hello, Desiree. Nice to see you. Uh, Joel says, practice in your colour workshop for the upcoming one. Mm, always practicing. I want this to be a finished painting, this one, though. More of a, um, let's say, more of a performance than a practice. So I actually can't remember which colours I used for this. I'm going to want a high chroma red. I think on the inside um, I had a, something like that. That will certainly help. And then we want some lighter colours around the edges. That's probably going to be useful. I can't actually remember. These are all the chips that I use for this painting, but I've been working on it for so long. Good shadow colour. that I can't actually remember which ones I used, but, that, you know, those will be plenty to mix to start with. So this gives me, like, light. That seems very orange. Maybe it's a change in the local colour. Light down into shadow for this rose. These are background colours. So I'm going to kind of, because I haven't mixed anything ready, I'm just going to kind of mix as I go along and probably be a little bit freer than I perhaps sometimes um, hello, Monica. Yeah, I I had I had forgotten to turn on a mic. So this is linseed oil. I'm going to oil out just the areas that I'm going to paint over today. A little bit of. Now I use pure gum turpentine as my solvent. I've got to remember today because I have the camera not set up particularly well. So if I stand in my normal painting position which is here, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I have to kind of paint from the side. So um, you can shout in the chat if I end up getting in the way <laughs> and you can't see what I'm doing. So this is a makeup sponge. I think I got this tip. I saw Colleen Barry use it one time. I can't remember. What, but, and they're absolutely brilliant. I can't remember where I saw it. And they're brilliant. So you can stick it in there, blot it off a little bit. And now I'm going to be painting all this area here. 
the the paintings the the surface of the painting is completely dry. I'm hoping to get down there, so I'm not hold that out as well. I'm kind of committed myself to getting down there as well. I want these to disappear a bit more. They're they're much too hard at the moment. I think probably would end up doing more of this area. I guess I could oil out the whole thing, but it's, I'm probably only going to work on those bits today. I do want to work a bit more on this flower and possibly this one, but I kind of, I'm fairly happy where they are, so. An Isle of Calm, that's nice. It's actually what I generally hope to give you in these streams. I'm going to do some mixing. Let's knock together some of these flower colours to start with. Um, what I'll do actually is whilst I'm doing this, oh, I was going to switch. I was going to switch to the. Um, oh, that's frustrating. I can't switch cameras because my camera control app has crashed. Oh, why? It was fine earlier on and now it's gone down. I can't. Oh, it's back. Can I switch cameras then? Yeah. Great stuff. Oh, perfect. So let's do a little bit of mixing. Um, these chips I had, these are, oh, are Munsell chips for anyone who hasn't seen them before. So if nothing else, it allows me to keep the colour really consistent across across different sessions, even when there's like as there is for this one, you know, there's been a long period it, it, between now and the last session. I've done other things, worked on other paintings, so, you know, I mean, yes, I could just mix, arguably, I could just mix to what's on the painting and that would work just as well. Though, um, I think one of the, the advantages, the useful things about, um, Munsell and the chips and, and having the book or at least some visual representation of it is that it's it's a three-dimensional um, view of colour so you get to see colour from a point of view of the hue and the value which most people know about but also the chroma which makes a huge difference to painting and um so if you're mixing particular colour, it lets you see where that colour fits in the range of colours that are available to you in paint. There's usually like multiple ways of getting to a colour, lower chroma colour. Anyway, not these ones so much, because these are all fairly high chroma, but lower chroma colours, there's usually a lot, a lot of different ways that you could get there and you could mix them. Actually, that's all right, but the chrome is a little bit low. But what I used was white, yellow, and um, and quinacridone rose, so it should have had me pretty close. Might actually be closer. Let's try another way of doing that sake of interest. Lead white. Try some naphthol red. Because it's a slightly orange red that I'm going for. So if I if I use a, a pigment that's closer to the hue that I want, I might end up with higher chroma. Yeah. Value is a bit high, so I'm going to add in a little bit more. This is naphthol red and lead white. Yeah, that's closer, but it's still a little bit light. I'm going to bring it down a little bit value, which also, because I'm adding more of the colour that's tinting the white, I'm getting higher chroma too, so that's good. So this is actually a high chroma mix, so it's a better starting point. Needs to go slightly yellow, but only a little bit. I 
Nailed it. So this version is slightly higher chroma. Let's go on with this for the next one down then. Thank you, David. That's very nice of you to say. Hello, Diane. Nice to see you. Hope you're well. I am at present for anyone who's just joined, just mixing up the colors that I'm going to use to play with this flower. So <clears throat> this is, sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm more strict about my color and sometimes I'm a, a bit more devil may care with it. Um, but I almost always mix before I start painting and the reason I like that, I've just got used to this way of painting, is that it means that if I've got every colour, or at least, you know, I can very quickly mix any colour that I need already out on the palette, then um, this is going to need to go a bit towards red, blue red, so I'm going to put some quinacridone in it. Then I can just focus on, you know, edges, the expression of the brush strokes, the accuracy of the drawing, modeling of the form, all those kinds of things. I mean, there's enough to be thinking about in painting anyway, without struggling with mixing the right color at the same time as well. That's cool, that's gonna be close enough. So this is the same, that's the same value, but it's more orange. I wonder why I've got that one there. It's definitely in there, so let's do that one just with, because it's gonna be more orange, we'll do this one just with naphthol. Bring it up to the value with white, and then I will add a little bit of caddy yellow. That will raise the value slightly as well. Send it a little bit more orange. So where did these colors come from originally? Well, not the photo. Obviously I'm working from a photo now because I started this painting, God knows, must be like two months ago or something now. The flowers have long gone. I can tell you that for nothing. Um, so I took a load of color notes from the subject as I always do. Uh, because I, I'm very interested in learning about the, the colours that things actually are and how those colours change from light to shadow because I think it teaches you uh, principles of colour that you can then, that'll do, you can then extrapolate into different ways of painting. So an, an example of that would be, <clears throat> you know, people talk a lot about warm and cool. Well, I... Uh, I actually do talk a little bit in terms of warm and cool these days, but um, I think it's useful to know that something can appear cool or warm relative to another colour, not just because of its hue. People generally talk about warm and cool just in terms of hue, but chroma is equally important. So a low chroma orange will appear cool next to a high chroma orange, and vice versa. That's way too orange. Let's go really, really red. Ooh, nice. That is high chroma. So this is just naphthol. It's still a little bit too orange, but I think I'm going to live with it because it's so lovely. This is just naphthol and quinacridone rose. Electric red. So now I want this one. So I'm going to go with Let's try quinacridone and a little bit of transparent red oxide, which is going to send it more orange, which I want to happen as it goes into the shadow. So the hue will definitely go more orange. Warm shadows. And um, that's a little bit low in value, but it will work. And. Uh, Transparent red oxide is, is high chroma and in the lower lower value 
and it will send it more orange, so that's nice. So that's an example of the kind of thing that you can learn by doing a study of colour. So then if you wanted to paint something, if you wanted to use colour in perhaps you could say a more expressive way, but still have it read well as form, then it's useful to know those things. Let's mix some background colour as well. Better clean that off because I've got quinacridone on the palette here. So all my painting sessions pretty much, unless I'm doing like a, a value study, even then actually the painting sessions, they always start like this with mixing colour. Let's mix a fair bit of this. I don't know how much of it I'm going to need. But... So that's why I'm going to put a little bit of black in it, drop the value a little bit and keep the chroma low, and then I'm going to put in a little bit of this green gold. Let's see what happens. Yeah, great. I'll do. So what bothers me about this rose is I had all of these roses painted pretty much like this with with what I now feel is too is too hard an edge, too much hard edges. So I've softened, repainted all of these and softened them, focusing more on the big shapes rather than details. This has too much detail already for me, and it's. Um, edges are too hard. Let's go in with, so I'm going to use some hog brushes. These are Cornelison's hogs. Really, really like these. These are both about size five, I think, something like that. So I'm going to dip them in my medium that I used to prepare the panel the what I'm going to paint today and then wipe them off because I don't like going in with dry brushes. Yeah. I think this area here possibly would even be lighter. So my main goal at the moment for today is just to take out the detail and think about the big shapes. So you, you'll see me whilst I'm, I'm painting, I'm going to be mixing some colour on the fly as well. Um, but using the ones that I've already got here as a starting point. So repainting all of it means I can take out the detail. I need a light right up the top of the value scale. I can take out the detail and I can um, soften all of the edges as I go, basically cover it. Let's get one more smaller brush for the lights. And I used to, uh, quite often for flowers, I used to use these brushes. I still do sometimes Rosemary's Angled Eclipses, and they're nice for some parts of a flower when you want a hard edge. But I, I have lately been using rougher hog brushes. And um, I think I prefer them. It's almost nice to be 
slightly less, not less in control, but to, to, uh, they kind of create what you could call sort of artifacts on the, on the surface of the painting, you know, brush strokes, and they can become part of the, what creates the, the form, or appears to create the form. Um, so this area here, that this is probably all best thought of as shadow. Yeah, up around there too. See, I like that more already. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's stronger already. I want a bit of actually. I haven't got any oil on there, but <clears throat> I wonder if I can get a bit more chroma in there. So I do have the reference photo up, obviously, but I've got it, I can't see it very clearly, if that makes sense. It's quite small. I've got it, I've got it quite small and it's on a screen and it's quite a long way away from me and that's helping me. The reason I do that is that it, I can't actually get involved in the detail too much because I can't see them. I can't even see the details. And I really, really don't want to get involved in them at this point. You know, I just want to be making more kind of general statement. Oh, for some reason, um, the chat has stopped updating itself. I seem to be having loads of technical problems today, don't know why. So I'm sorry if I haven't been answering, but it's because um, I haven't been seeing the chat messages. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for the message. Hello, Nigel. Good to see you. Thank you, George. What a lovely thing to say. So every now and again, I'm going to have to just kind of uh, flick from one browser to the other to try and keep up with you. Um, I'm I'm getting slowly happier i think with this now let me <clears throat> i just want i want the general form and i want very soft edges around here see that this area here should be that maybe a bit lower chroma as it comes out towards the light let's think about that lower chroma red It's really, really tempting to go in and start painting each of those individual petals. It's like, you, you know, it's an effort. It really is an effort not to do that. To try to remember what it is that I'm, I'm trying to focus on here. I want a lower, a lower chroma, slightly lighter, reddish orange. Lower chroma than any of the ones I've got mixed at the moment. There's just a hint of it coming out into the light here. I 
have to do something at work. I don't know how long I'm going to be on today, probably a little while. So feel free to pop in and out. So these sessions that I do, they're not really, um, they're not particularly supposed to be like teaching sessions. They are just, look at it like this. Imagine that you'd popped around and I happen to be painting. And we were chatting as I was painting. It's kind of like that. When I, when I teach, everything is a lot more structured, as anyone who knows me will be able to tell you. I'm happy. I'm much happier with this flower already. I wonder if I bring in oh, it's quite a bit lighter there actually. Do I want it that light? Yeah, maybe. So I want some of the background here so I can get a lovely soft edge down here where it's coming out into nothingness. This is all slightly lighter. Chroma drops. That I feel that made a big difference. So about edges, like increasingly, just lately. I mean, I've always been a fan of soft edges, but increasingly lately, I've, I've been teaching what you might call extreme edge softening to people, because I, I noticed that it was. I was trying and trying and trying to persuade people to paint with softer edges because I know how much it can add life to a painting and um, there seemed to be a certain amount of resistance to, <laughs> to, to, to softening them as much as I was trying to persuade people to do it. And so the workshop that I've just done, we did some what can only be called extreme edge softening. And I think the results were amazing. We basically, we, we painted our studies. They were just value studies and then did the most extreme edge softening on them. And I think I finally found a way to be able to, to show, to demonstrate to people more clearly what happens when you really soften your edges, how that how that can change your work for the better. I need something more blue here. I'm getting a little bit distracted. I'm go I'm gone off the point a bit, and I'm I'm looking at the vase. This is um, fallow green. It's actually Windsor and Newton, Windsor Green, a yellow shade, I think. I want this in, I want that in there, but I also want it to be. soft so if I make sure that I've got wet paint all around it too dark too dark Brushes come too dark. 
paint on there now. I'm making sure that this whole area is wet now so that I can then get a nice soft brush like this with no paint on it and um, soften this whole area. So to me, the more, I think I was, I was halfway through a thought earlier on that I didn't finish about. So I was, I've been teaching people like extreme edge softening. And the funny thing is, sometimes, um, sometimes when you teach, you end up doing things that you wouldn't normally do when, you, when you're just painting, but you find that you really, really, really like them. You, <laughs> you know, you like what happens. Um, so I was doing this kind of extreme edge softening and I decided that I liked it so much that I started doing it a lot more in my own painting and um, the more I do it the more I fall in love with it. I'll show you, I'll show you an example of, of what I'm talking about in a second. So all of these so I'm looking to make soft edges, like painting wet up to wet edges so I can get softness all around here. Kind of a gentle optical effect. Uh, what can I show you? Oh, one that was finished on Monday. It's a study, value study. Of course, anyone who's on the workshop, this won't be new to you because you would have painted a version of this yourself. But this was done in two sessions. The first one was, um, you see that? The first one was wiped out. First stage was a wipeout. And then the second stage was painting with cooler values into the light. So you get a kind of a warm and cool thing going on. Extreme edge softening. And I think it just adds so much life. And um, As I say, it's, it's been kind of a, a struggle to persuade people just at least to try softening edges that much. I think I have finally found a way to do it where people have been excited by it. And I've seen the difference that it can make. Um, does this flower need any more work? I don't know, probably does. Probably does need some more work, but I'm not sure if it needs any more detail though. Really. Let's get some of this really high chroma red in here. That I think is about the highest chroma you could possibly get at that hue, at that value. Chroma meaning intense color as opposed to gray. Let's soften some of this. Oh, that was nice. Right. Yeah. This is where we're going. So I think a lot of what makes this particular rose stand out is the chroma anyway. Uh, I don't think it needs a lot of hard edges to really make it sing. I'm going to have a hard edge here against the green. Didn't like that shape that happened there, though. I'm going to have a hard edge here, I think. Harder. Let's soften some of this some more. Oh, nice. When, when these lighter pinks 
and blend into the green. It creates some really beautiful kind of in-between colours. Am I going too far? Can I change my mind? Might be losing the form a bit too much, getting it so excited with all of this red softening. But I can always bring, it's easy to bring the detail back in. I think because of the way we kind of, we think about painting, it's more difficult to, to, to take it out once it's in there. bit more form in there maybe. A little lower value here will push that space down. Mm. So I'm standing right back now and I'm squinting down to see if I'm happy with that. I think I, think I pretty much am. Um, I've taken out the bits that were really bothering me. Taken out all those hard edges. Hopefully still has enough form to read. Dry brush for a soft edge, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Vina. Anne-Marie says, they look so dreamy as they are. I'm happy you're keeping them soft. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. The softer, the better. It's become, it's gone in a different, different direction. But these, the squashes are really bothering me now. They really are. Like, what's going on there? They're, you know, these horrible, hard-edged, lumpy little things down there. Um... The reason why they're a lot, you could say warmer, more towards yellow, the hue of those squashes is because the, the colors I mixed were, actually they were taken from color notes from life, but I, I, I wonder now if they actually were, if I, if I was a bit wrong with my color notes and I made them a bit too yellow. This is one of them. But no, I think it's pretty close. So you can see the actual squash, the difference between the actual squash and the photo. There, you know. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I just went to put it back and I realized that's part of the setup that I've just put together that I'm planning to start painting tomorrow. Foolish boy. What did I do that for? That wasn't the best idea I've ever had, to be fair. What colors did I use? Sorry, I know I'm getting in front of the camera. I'm gonna move in a minute. I'm looking for some monster chips that I probably used for those colours at some point. What did I use? Hmm. 
Reflected mm. light. Let's just let's mix up some colours. Um, so I'm thinking about my squashes and I want them Yes, Marianne, I do. Franz Mortelmans is a wonderful flower painter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm a big fan. Big fan. Is uh, I would say that uh, where I'm going is a lot, a lot softer now than than his painting. But yeah. Um, Tipu says, is there any oil paint thinner? that is not toxic. Oh, right, a solvent that's not toxic. I'd like to introduce my young niece to oil painting as safe as possible. I'm not a materials expert, I'm afraid, but I'll tell you what the best thing you can do is if you go onto Facebook and look for the Painting Best Practices group, Painting Best Practices, and do a search for safe solvents there. Um, because, you know, <clears throat> Where your niece is concerned, I'm certainly not happy giving you advice about what you should be using because, you know, that's quite a responsibility and I'm not a materials expert at all. Um, I know what I use <clears throat> and I know it works and I know it well, but I, I'm, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a materials expert or a health expert and you need to be getting advice from both of those types of people, it seems to me, if you want to protect your niece. So go to the Painting Best Practices group run by um, John O'Hanlon. That's where I always send people who want to know anything about materials. Joel says, it's like poetry. The more often I'm listening and watching, the more I get the impression that you want to dissolve your forms in a poetry of abstract colour cloud. What a lovely way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I would say... Uh, the first half of that sentence is one that I've said myself, to myself plenty of times, is that increasingly I'm looking to dissolve the forms in light and trying to use what I understand about colour and, and, and to use also very soft edges in order to, to do that, to dissolve the forms in light. So what I'm after here is a light value low ish chroma green so i've got two greens here i've got green gold which is a very yellow green and then i've got thalo green which is a blue green so i can move between them that's all right but the chroma is too high so i'm going to Bring in some black, which is a blue. It's also gone a little bit too yellow. Bring up ivory black is a blue. In. Bring up the value with white. It's too dark still, so I'll save some of that. This is for, because I want to drop the chroma and raise the value a little bit, so I'll get something in between the two. Yeah, that's what I want. That's pretty much it. What is that? 5GY and 9-2. And then a lower value.
Mm. See how yellow that um, that green gold sends a color. It's more thalo green into cool it, and now the chroma is way too high. So I'm going to mix some of this black and lead white to the same value. because again, it's a little bit too yellow. So the black being a blue will actually pull it more blue and drop the chroma at the same time. So I'm, I'm kind of mixing it like a little modeling string here. I want light, something in the middle, like a half tone and something to use for the shadow. Hello, Olaf, nice to see you. Um, sorry if I'm not keeping up with the, the comments so well today because Well, the way I, I do these streams is I have a, <clears throat> I pay for this online service called Restream, which is really good, you know, and it allows me to stream to, um, let me move that down so you can see it, allows me to stream to um, YouTube and Facebook at the same time, it's great. But it's, it's, it's not working so well today the chat messages aren't coming through where they're supposed to because normally it, it pulls them together you know it pulls together the youtube comments and the oh look at that <laughs> horrendous horrendously out way too much um of the green of the thalo green went way too blue green so i'll put it right back orange again see what we get probably the chrome is a bit low a bit lower there Seems to be like about a value six I want, so I've gone a long way from where I wanted to be with this color because I was too busy talking and not thinking about what I was doing. Um, so it's it's a little bit too dark. I'm going to take some of it, bring the value up with white. And then I'm going to bring some of that yellow green back in to drop the value back down with more chroma this time. All right, and now we're too green, too yellow green. Make it more blue. Try not to overdo it this time. So that's another thing that Munsell does help you do is to, is to mix consistently down a string. Um, I'm not, I don't believe in um, mixing shadow colors as exactly the same hue as the light and the halftone colors. I know a lot of people do because I've personally found in my own practice that they change a little. Um, a little in, in hue mostly. Let's try some of these. Let's stick some of this on and see what we've got. It's a good size brush to be playing with. So usually when I'm painting a form like this, I'll have two brushes, one for the light and one for the shadow. I've still got to go back. 
can see how hard this is to compare to everything else. You know, we've got these lovely, everything is working really nicely up here, nice and soft. I think we're down here, it's like, ah, what's going on? That's not what we want at all. So I'm gonna get some oil on these. I've already oiled that area out. I get a bit of oil on my brushes first and then I wipe them off so they're not, they're not going down completely dry. Um, like, see, here, I think this can disappear completely, this edge. Don't need an edge there at all. Let's go a bit thicker. I think that's all too dark. I mean, these, these little, these are just shapes, really. They're just there for to be something in the composition there. They're not really, um, I don't want them pulling attention too much, but they, they allowed me to pull all of this over to the right. And I really like this column, straight column of green over to the right. That was a kind of an early uh, compositional uh, choice, if you like, that I very much wanted. So I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I'm painting it more broadly and destroying the edges. If I accentuate the reflected light here, I can bring the value up and then this will disappear a little bit more again. Soften the edge, soften the edge. Need more paint on there to do it well though. So I wanna make sure that down here I've got all soft edges and then I'll, I'll, I might selectively harden one or two if I feel that it's gonna, it's gonna uh, be necessary. 
I want everything to be really, really soft down here. I need a bit more of my background color. So talking about forms dissolving into the light, that's what I'm trying to do with this. I'm trying to make it dissolve into the light. <clears throat> but I need, uh, I think it's, I think it's coming off. Right? Yeah, that's in a nicer place. Hello, Anna, nice to see you. Sorry, just deleting a bit of spam there <laughs> in, the, in the messages. They always come on when you're live. Peter, hello, nice to see you. It's nice to see you painting a larger format. Nice Raymond Seaton feel. Wow, well, that is, um, I'll take that as a huge compliment. Peter, thank you, because, um, He's a brilliant painter. Really, really good painter. Paul Raymond Seaton, um, flower painter. He does quite a lot with light background, actually. I can see where you're coming from with that. This is the first painting I've done, I think, with a background this light. I think so. So I'm bringing up the values a little bit on these on these little squashes as well at the same time because I want them to be less uh, strong in the composition. So as well as softening the values, I'm I'm bringing up the um, softening the edges. Sorry, I'm bringing up the values quite a bit as well. Want them to be kind of. Let's have a try just a bit of a dark value around here. Want them to be disappearing. So as I say, they're 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 really there. I mean, they're there because I like the color of them against the pinks, and because um, I, I I liked this. I mean, where this started was with these the pinks of these roses against this green kind of column dark green column I thought that compositionally that was really nice but I didn't want to I, whack it straight in the middle it just looked a little bit too like obvious so I shifted it over to the side and then I felt like it needed something else really um, and um, that something else ended up being having tried a bunch of little pots and bowls and god knows what else stuck these squashes in and decided that actually I liked those I liked the, the little squashes there more than anything else. Um, because the, 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 the green is kind of reflected by the green in the background. It's, um, it relates quite closely to the green in the background. Something up here. Gorgeous. That's better. Reflected light view. Yeah. 
now I need my um, I need some more background I think because I've run out of that but I also need my cloth color now the cloth is really it's interesting because it's very low chroma so it's very close and if pretty much the same really as the as the value of the background it's very high value but it's very low chroma so there's just a slight difference in hue between the background and um and the cloth and the background is is green it's slightly green but the cloth is uh, purple red purple but it's so low chroma that it looks grey. But I want that. I want that. I did have some chips that were exactly the colour that I was using there. Let's see if I can find them. And I think also looking at it now, I feel like the because I've pushed a lot of the values higher in places I feel like these shadows these cast shadows are looking a bit too dark to me now but I'm going to mix up so these are the colors that I've been using for the cloth and for anybody out there who is a monthly type person this is 10 pb it's a purple blue light to shadow I don't need all of these but maybe if I mix those two. So I want some purple up there. Oh, and this is actually, let me show you, let me show you the, um, the palette more closely because there's an interesting thing here. Talking about um, this one's a bit dirty here. <laughs> Talking about the principles of what happens to color in light and shadow. So there's an interesting little color story here for that cloth. Firstly, you might think it's grey. It, it's actually, and th these colours are taken from the actual cloth itself. Um, it's actually slightly purple blue. So these are a, a, a purple blue. But where it goes into the shadow, what happens is the cast shadows, there's a bit of, and now I think this is probably caused by ambient light within the room. It goes in hue, it changes, and the chroma goes up very slightly. So this is actually, I think it's a 10YR, is it? Yeah, 10YR, which just means yellow, red. So that is a low chroma. Orange. So in the shadows, these cast, the cast, oh, I can't, you can't see it now. But the cast shadow is actually slightly orange. But I'm going to need some purple on my palette now. Or some blue and I, you know I may as well just stick some purple on because that's going to get me closer so this is uh, what is this dioxazine purple stick a bit of that on there I'm going to put out a, get a tiny bit more quinacridone because we'll run out of that just in case So that's a good example of the way that colour can change from light to shadow. If it's a very, very low chroma colour like this cloth is, very close to neutral. Um, what will tend to happen is that the, the shadows will actually be very slightly higher chroma as well than the light. And they will also, the hue will change too and go a little bit more towards orange or well it would just it would move like you could say in that case that warm and cool is is quite uh, apposite description because it would move around the hue wheel in a in the direction it's going to take it warmer the blues um you know they could go either way they could go towards purple and be warmer or they could go towards uh A green and and be warmer. My experience from painting a lot of spheres of different colours and being very 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 careful about the colours is that blues in shadow in interior light at least tend to go towards green and not towards purple. 
and green once it goes far enough around becomes the hue wheel becomes yellow and then you end up with something like this which is a low chroma orange chroma is a little bit high i'm going to leave it though i'm going to i'm going to try let's mix some more of that because i'm going to try slightly higher chroma purple in the lights today of the cloth why not see what happens well let's try it and see oh no i won't do that now because you can't see it happen until i switch back so then a lower chroma purple at uh, lower value purple sorry i'm going to put some black in it because i want to make sure the chroma doesn't go too high a tiny bit of this dioxazine purple see what i get <laughs> too much purple no thank you I mean, that is low chroma, but it's just, it's too much. That's just too much. I've got some gray here. Mm. I mean, I, I could probably get away with that. Let's drop it a little bit. So I'm just thinking about, I mean, I'm very interested in, in natural color most of the time, but I'm just thinking about pushing the chroma of that a little bit. And then let's have um, a YR shadow color, which I also am going to want to be lighter. So YR yellow red. So raw umber is really useful for this. It's a, it's a yellow orange. We go down the value range. And as I add more raw umber, I'll go down the value range and I will also add chroma so i might want to bring in some black to drop that chroma so i was saying earlier on at the start that's why i have black on the palette for some colors it's i want to drop chroma yeah gonna drop some chroma there well bring the value down with black i'm inching towards the color that i want for the shadows on the cloth millimetering towards it really very very slow all right then light slightly darker lights and shadow the values are close though i mean the values are really close i'm painting with really close values here you know <clears throat> um so the light the value of the light is nine the value of the shadow is six i think or seven six Probably haven't mixed enough. Let's get a couple of brushes out. So I've got new brushes out, like light and shadow now for this area. I tend to do this a lot because I, you know, if I used my, say if I used the brushes that I'd used for the flowers here, I would end up getting, <clears throat> these are so low chroma, these colors, I'd end up getting loads of red in there, which I just don't want. And the color would run away from me really fast. I mean, the color is, is really tightly controlled in this painting, to be fair. Um, I didn't mix nearly enough of this. Ooh, gorgeous. Yeah, I like that. We'll let it go right. Destroy the form. The nice thing, uh, the reason I think this works so well, kind of destroying the form, is that. Um, <clears throat> painting across edges is that your your let's get some oil on this actually your your brain creates what isn't there for you and you know this is a, um could be a bit of a 16 is a bit of a cheat but quite often your brain or the viewer's brain will if they're left to create an area of a painting might actually do a better job than you did if you could paint it yourself you know Shh, don't tell anyone. Yes. So I want this to be lighter over here. I'm thinking about these cast shadows as well. And I'm thinking that I've let them get too dark. The higher I push all of the values in the background, um, the happier I am, it seems, with this painting. If you could see it close up, it's really loosely painted. It's very brushy, but because it's like a, it's not that big. It's a 12 by 16 inch painting. And I can't quite fit the whole thing 
on the screen because I need a, a, ca a camera lens that zooms out more. But let's actually let's just try. What if I just kind of do it like a light glaze over that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted there. Yeah. Well, that was easy. Great. We'll try just painting in a little bit for the shadow colour. We can get a softer edge here. Yeah, I should, uh, somewhere, I guess on, on Facebook, probably I, I'll post, um, see I've run out of that already, I want more now. I'll post some close-ups of this because it's really, in places it's really, it really is very loosely painted and uh, even rough, you could probably say it's a little bit rough in places. Did I mix some more background? At some point, I think I maybe should do something about this. It's just, it's too, it's not nicely painted. It's rough and, and it has soft edges as I want, but it's not nicely painted. So I probably will do something about that at some point, but not today. So yeah, I'm not going to finish it today, but I'm going to get, it's going to be really close. It'll just be a, a few little things. Actually, I was watching a video of Susan Lyon the other day, brilliant, brilliant painter, and she was saying, when she gets towards the end of a painting, she, um, in order to get to the finish, she makes a list of things that she wants to fix and then she'll go and fix those things and then she makes herself stop once she's got to the bottom of the list. What a brilliant idea, right? Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Jim says, I just sampled the on-screen photo in Photoshop. The cloth is blue, blue, purple, and the cast shadow is orange, as you said. Perhaps the cast shadow is picking up the light from the backdrop, which is also orange. Yeah, that, now that's an interesting thing about this photo, though, Jim. And what happens with photos is that the colour that I'm painting the background is green. And that is the colour that the background actually was. Um, somehow in the photo it ended up a slightly different color it ended up you know i'm generally i try to be very careful to, to have accurate color in my photo but i didn't get it too right in this one and um and the background is quite a different color so it's definitely not picking up orange from the background because the background is actually green um but that's a great thing to be to be testing out. You know, it's a good thing to be testing and, and checking. So actually, I think 
Uh, I mean, I've seen this in, in every setup that I, that I put together as well. In, um, is that the shadows will always tend towards orange. And uh, I believe it's ambient light from inside the room when you, you think that most of the, or a lot of the stuff that you'll have in a room is basically to, tending towards orange. And this, um, this room that I paint in has a parquet wooden floor, which is very orange. And I suspect that's where it comes from, a slightly warmish ambient light. The walls in here are painted, God, what would you call it? I don't really like it, Urku or something, you probably call it. Not a big fan, but um, this ought to be disappearing. Oh, anti light. Yes, so. Um, this being an effect that I've seen a lot of times in different setups, I believe it's actually comes from ambient light in the room. Hmm. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone so far today. I'm trying to decide if there's anything that I really want to fix now that I can fix. This is a good time to fix. Or if it's going to be a case of basically standing back again now and, and thinking so I'm not actually looking at the photo now, I'm just looking at the painting and I'm just thinking about what I, in, it might need. Um, to come to a finish. Uh, I, to be honest, I think probably not all that much at this point. I mean, when you, when, as I say, when you see it close, I mean, a lot of it looks really rough, but from a distance, it, it works nicely. So it may be that perhaps I would need to decide that some parts of it would, would be, I would finish a little bit more. Um, I, I suspect I would probably do a little bit more on the flowers, maybe, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure they really need it. Decision time. Do I keep going or do I stop? I think I'm going to need to stop now because I'm not, I'm, I'm in a, I'm at a point where I'm not sure what needs to change. Um, so I'm probably better off putting it aside for a couple more days and just deciding because it's, I think it will probably finish really quickly now. I think there would only be a, a, a there'd be very little to do to finish it off. Um, I'm just trying to take some of the more obvious mottling in the background out. I like it, but I don't want too much. So I think it's probably the best idea now is for me to um, Oh yeah, Jim, change those curtains. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice comment. Desire says I, I appreciate this process. Watching the process of going on in an already dry painting and reworking, vulnerability goes out the window. Yeah, you've got to be bold, I think. You've got to say, no, it's not what I want, got to change it. 
and hope that what you're going to do next is going to is going to improve things a little bit. <laughs> Live with the possibility that it won't. I want a. I just want a little bit more of a suggestion of. Let's get this right. Top of the top of the bars. So at the moment, because my photo is very small and on the screen on the other side of the room, I need to actually physically walk over to it to be able to see it. For any details that I want to do, and then I have to come back. and I think there's a kind of something quite good about that because it means I. I have to look just at what I'm what I'm painting and decide, you know, whether it works with the painting, not whether I'm getting closer to the photo or not. Yeah, I think we're really close to finished. I think we are. Oh, the Facebook feed ended, did it? No, it's still running for me. I can still see it all right. Uh, will I be sending it? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure when. Um, Ginny, I'll uh, Ginny, I'll, I'll get in touch with you because I'm also I haven't been sending paintings for a little while, and I just wanted to work through some stuff, and I think I'm out of the other side of that now, and starting to create stuff that I'm happy to to allow to leave the studio now. Um, so I'll get in touch and uh, let's talk about it. Mariana, so nice to see you. Sorry, I didn't realize you were here. Cheryl says, finish the upper left leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there are some areas of the leaves I really like the way they're working, like here and here. But this just kind of looks a bit, and this one I like, this looks a bit scrappy to me. So I think that needs to be, that area needs to be addressed. It doesn't really, maybe a little bit on the flowers, I'm not sure. Thank you, Kate. Kate says it's been hugely therapeutic to watch your colour mixing. Thank you. Kathy says, can you tell me the colours in the background again? Um, the colours in the background, right. Uh, yeah, do you Munsaw? Um, it's mostly 5G UI. No, it isn't. Can I find it? Yeah, sorry, 5Y91. No. No. Yeah. 5GY, green, yellow, 9292. Nine, um, but it's also mixed in with some, some greys and it's been scumbled over a few times, so it's slightly, it's changed a little bit as well, you know. Um, so I've dropped the chroma a little bit, but I've kept the value that high. At the moment, my favourite bit of the whole painting is this rose and that light bit there. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I'm going to wrap up now. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, we seem to have had a few technical difficulties today. I'm not sure what. I seem to be sending everything out fine, but it's not always... Um, Doing the best out there. I'm just looking at the rows that I changed, and I'm so happy that I did that. This, I, I still needs a bit of work though. Uh, 
yeah, this bit here, that just looks completely wrong. Just, I don't know what I was thinking about when I did that. But at the very least, I need a cup of tea now before I do any more. So listen, I'm going to stop the stream today. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. It was lovely to have you along and to share a painting session with you. Um, and I'll see you all again soon. Um, probably next week, Wednesday, will be a, another stream and I'm going to have my new subject on the way then, which is also going to be a big one about this size as well. Well, big, I say big. For a lot of people, it's not big, but it is for me. But thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.